Hello everyone and you're welcome to this quick devlog. So in this devlog on our 2D platformer game, I'll show you how I set up this menu system. So first we can actually look at this cursor right here. I'll just get rid of this. So we can actually look at this cursor. What I did was set a sine wave here. So if I go ahead and play the scene, we could see this pulsing. So the pulse is just from a simple sine wave, a sine behavior, and I've set it to sine with a period of one. So that allows it to pulse. So the next one we can actually notice, if I go ahead and press play, is that when I use the arrow keys, we can actually switch between the start and continue. So I'll just show you how I quickly set that up. So here in our event sheets, let's just go to our start screen events. So I'll just open up the event sheets and then go to our e start screen. So basically I have a system event on our start of layout that sets the position of our cursor. So first I'm going to set a X position and a Y position and we can actually see our Y to be 110. Right now I'm setting the Y to 130, 30. so that's 20 units separate. So that's what that does. And I also have a global variable called our main value. So basically what we do is to switch main value, if it's one or else, if that value has changed, we'll set our cursor back and then this drives the movement. So if you look at our keyboard event, when we press the down arrow keys, what we are going to do is to actually set that value to our menu value to be greater than one. So uh, that's what we're doing. And then in system, we're subtracting one from the menu value. So basically, if we cycle between down and up, our value, which is our menu value, will change. And then this will be active on our layout to change that position. And then finally, when we press the enter key, let's just go ahead and see that again. So if we press the enter key, we can see the start blink quickly. So I'll just go ahead and close this. So basically, when we press the return key, it's going to flash for 0 0.05 seconds on, 0 0.05 seconds on for a duration of half a second. And it's going to wait for 0 0.5 seconds and then go to the main layout. So uh, basically that's what we're working on. And then in our main layout, if I go back to our e-main, if I open up our startup section for our event system, we can actually see I have a fade UI right here. And that fades my user interface. So it just sets this to uh, invisible, right? So it just waits for zero for one second and then set the visibility to invisible so we can actually see it when it's created. Basically, that's what does this. So if I go ahead to my start screen and play the start screen, while I press enter, this UI is going to stay for a second and then disappear. So uh, basically, what we've added here also in our gameplay we have a jump through platform when we press down so our player can jump through. We can destroy these jumping enemies. We have a patrolling enemy as well. And then we have flying enemies. And this flying enemy is also using a sine wave with a vertical movement. And once I press R, I can restart that scene again. So uh, what we're going to be working on next is our health system such that when our player gets hurt, we can actually, you know, kind of like get rid of a health right here with our UI system. So, uh, yeah, so that's the quick devlog. See you guys in the next devlog.